Hey guys, so as you can probably already tell, today's video is going to be slightly different to my usual roster. Today I'm going to be showing you a neat little technological trick on how you can use your Android to control your desktop PC. So as you can see here, the smaller screen is the Android, the bigger screen is my computer. The reason why it's so wide is because there are uh, my computer is currently displaying two screens uh, and they're just put side by side. If you look at the Android, you can see that uh, it's actually remotely accessing both screens as well. I just have to swipe from left to right to access each one. And I've got the YouTube homepage uh, on both screens there and you can see the taskbar, taskbar at the bottom. So this is actually remarkably easy to set up. I'm currently doing this on Linux Mint 15 although it is compatible on all new versions of Ubuntu and Linux Mint and I'm pretty sure it's just as easy to set up in Windows. So there are two parts to being able to do this. The first part is setting up your desktop computer. The second part is of course setting up your Android and I'm going to show you how to do both parts relatively easy today. So uh, on Linux Mint it's very 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 easy to set up because the software is already bundled with the default installation settings both on Ubuntu and on Linux Mint. So all you have to do, so if you look at the big screen, um, you need to find an application called desktop sharing. So if you pull open the menu and just type in desktop sharing, it's that top one there. And there, there are some settings that I've uh, that I've put in, which are currently allowing me to stream my desktop to my Android. So as you can see, um, sharing, allow other users to view your desktop, allow other users to control your desktop. Obviously, those two have to be checked. You must confirm each access to this machine. Again, not a bad idea, considering that uh, that just flags up a warning on your desktop. Someone is accessing your machine, just so you know that it's either it's you and not someone else. Uh, require the password to enter. The, uh, require a uh, the user to enter this password. That's also uh, highly recommended that you put that on as well. The only reason I haven't is simply because I'm just playing around with the feature today. Uh, and automatically configure UPnP uh, router to open and forward ports. This is also uh, should be checked as well. Although your router must have the UPnP feature enabled. Um, mine fortunately enough does and then you've got the notification area uh, settings i always have mine on because i just like to i don't know be in the know i guess and that's as simple as the settings you need to do on the desktop end so if you are running uh linux mint 15 and i assume it works the very very same way on linux mint 16 cinnamon edition then um then you're good to go and you've set up everything on the desktop end. So setting up things on your mobile device is just as easy as setting them up on your desktop machine. Uh, simply just go to the Google Play Store and you need to download the correct application. The correct application is Android VNC Viewer. It's that one with the blue mouse right in the corner and it absolutely has to be that one. It cannot be the Droid VNC Server or any of these other ones. It has to be Droid VNC Viewer. It's free to download and it is open source, so you know, added goodness there. And it's just as simple as installing it like you would with any other Google Play product. And then to set it up, all you have to do is enter in the IP address. Now you can find out the IP address on your machine by going to your network uh, properties. Uh, once you've typed in the IP address, um, you're pretty much good to go. A dialog box will pop up on your desktop machine just to let you know that another device is trying to access the desktop. Simply allow it and you're pretty much where I am right now. And I do have to say it is pretty damn awesome. So once you've got VNC up and running, it's pretty much uh, like having your desktop in your mobile device. Now it can be a little bit tricky to control at times. It's just something that you need to get used to, but it's, uh, it's very much a uh, slide your finger around to uh, to move from desktop to desktop. You can do that thing with uh, two fingers where you zoom in and um, it's simply just a tap to click. And as you can see, it's happening on both screens there. So there you go, I've got some rooster teeth on the go. And um, what have we got here? How about some Equestria Girls? on the uh, screen number two. And basically it's pretty damn awesome that I can control my desktop machine very easily from my Android. But there is a very particular reason why I decided to try this out. You see, as many of you are aware, the YouTube subscription box is broken. Not everyone's subscriptions are being delivered to their subscription box. And it's been broken for a while. YouTube know that it's broken and they're not doing anything about it. In fact, there are plenty of 
pretty verifiable rumours saying that YouTube are actually going to scrap the subscription feed entirely and switch completely over to the what to watch function, which would be a disaster because I don't want YouTube telling me what I want to watch. I want to tell YouTube what I want to watch. So I've been looking for ways on how to fix the subscription box and to um, acquire a subscription box type service for YouTube once they get rid of it, if they should get rid of it. And I thought, um, and I've been looking around for quite some time, I thought RSS feeds might be the way to go. RSS feeds seem to be updated on time. They don't seem to suffer from the same problems that the subscription box does. Uh, every Project Chronicle video seems to get uh, posted on time automatically, and that's done through the RSS feed. So, why not use uh, an, an RSS reader to get my YouTube video subscriptions? And that's what I do for the most part, and that's my plan with YouTube is to uh, to have all my subscriptions in Feedly.com, which is my RSS reader, which is a fantastic reader. In a few videos um, back, you can actually find out uh, more about it because I made a video about it. Um, and the added thing with doing things by RSS through Feedly.com is that it isn't just YouTube that I can subscribe to in the way that you tend to subscribe to YouTube. I can subscribe to other websites. As you can see here, I've got zero punctuation, which is an amazing show, but the thing about Zero Punctuation is that they release all their content on their website a week before they release their videos on YouTube. So, um, I can subscribe to Zero Punctuation's website and get their updates um, as they're released on their website, which is pretty damn awesome. Um, and the same goes for SourceFed. SourceFed bring out a lot of content on their website that, uh, that you don't see on their YouTube channel. So uh, it's nice to have this all in one feed, nicely organized using RSS. I think it's an absolutely amazing uh, bit of engineering. So obviously RSS readers aren't particularly new, but Feedly.com is a very user-friendly one, and it's one that works about as similar to YouTube as you're going to get. However, there is a slight catch when using RSS feeds to subscribe to YouTube channels, and that's that you lose the playlist function. What I like to do personally is find, uh, go through my subscription box uh, and then make uh, a playlist, a watch later playlist uh, of all the videos that have accumulated through the day. And at the end of the day, I just like to watch all uh, the videos that I've added to my uh, watch later playlist and, uh, and just sit back and relax and not have to do anything, kind of a bit like watching TV. However, um, you can't really do that with RSS. So I, was looking at, so I was looking at ways to sort of get around it, to circumnavigate it, so that I can basically uh, watch YouTube in the same way that I'd watch TV with my current equipment without having to buy in anything new, or more specifically, without actually having to build a YouTube box to plug into my television. So I started Googling around, trying out different ideas, and this is basically what I came up with. Using my Android here, effectively, as a remote control for my television. Now my television is the screen that's on the right hand side that you see now. My desktop is the screen that you see on the left. They're all wired into the same box, um, which is pretty damn awesome because you can watch BBC um, and even ITV and Channel 4, not that I watch much from those, um, through your computer these days. I've effectively made a computer slash TV machine. It's pretty damn awesome and I'll probably give you um, uh, more, of a, more of a tour of it at some point. But um, using a remote control allows me to sort of sit back, relax, and watch in the same way that I would with a TV. So, even though I don't have playlists, I've got a remote control where I can kind of just watch videos. And should I have the urge to, um, to comment or whatever, uh, you can simply click on, I believe it's the title, and that'll take you directly to the SourceFed website, where its uh, security officer saves baby. And i got to admit, um, I think that's the solution that I'm going to go with. I think I'm very um, proud of myself that I actually managed to set this up in the first place because um, remote access is always a little bit tricky. Um, or it looks a lot tricky, but it was actually very easy thanks to uh, the built-in features of Linux. So, or Linux Mint, uh, Linux Mint in particular, but um, but uh, other Linux distributions, and I'm sure Windows and Mac are just as easy to set up. But I thought I might want to, first of all, show off, show this off to you, but also give you a little bit of a how-to on how to do it. I will link you to the guide which I uh, which I used to set it up. It's, it goes into more detail than I do. Um, obviously, I couldn't go into too much detail without sort of um, 
without being a bit stupid in regards to uh, my my own security. So I'm kind of happy with the fact that now I can uh, kind of browse the internet in the same way that uh, that I might watch TV. Uh, I seem to have uh, found a pretty decent way of, uh, of, of sort of merging the two activities together. So that's about it from me today. Please let me know what you think down in the comments section below as usual. And uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.